Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, July 30th, 2024. It's about 11.53 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity on the globe here shows a 3.2 earthquake around the Mediterranean. Uh, we did see some movement up around the uh, Greenland area, just off the coast there of Greenland. Within the last hour and a half or so, a 5.1 earthquake, very top of the globe. Looks like prior to that, a little 3.6, so a little increasing movement up there in that region. Of course, that uh, is way up on top here, up around uh, this area where we got a divergent boundary activity uh, or tectonic plate here. Notice the separation of the arrows indicating the divergent zone. That ultimately, of course, will add further strain out here in the north american plate and it does look like we've seen a, a little 3.6 on the plate boundary prior to this 5.1 so movement increasing out here within this region of the north american plate there around the Gre uh, greenland area all right uh southern california see if anything else is going on out here today of course yesterday we got that uh, four pointer 4.9 out around barstow a handful of smaller quakes there uh last one a 2.7 last night so no further earthquake activity there in this region so far today got a little 1.1 here on along the uh, garlock fault shear zone just outside of the tehachapi area nothing big and a uh, typical movement out here across the southern end of the state extreme southern end uh 2.3 in there as well just off the brawley seismic zone so overall typical day out there across southern california for now Roughly about the same throughout Northern California. Really no major movement going on here. And as we look at the Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Uh, got a little bit of activity up here around the uh, Anderson Mountain area. Some very small microquakes up there into the uh, Pacific Northwest. Texas still getting hit with some aftershocks. Well, I can't really call these aftershocks here. I mean, if you look at the, the main quake, yeah, the five-pointer. They seen here a couple days ago. Uh, that was a 5.1 back on the 26th. Yeah, that would be considered the main quake, but they have seen earthquake activity out here off and on. Uh, but this specific area has been increasing in the uh, multitude of quakes out here. And of course, this whole area is littered with a lot of oil fields out here. So whatever's going on, there's wastewater ponds here. See these uh, little ponds out there in the Texas area? Wastewater ponds, oil. Uh, holding tanks there um, so this whole area just in general is underneath a lot of stress and strain and that's where the earthquake activity is uh, occurring here in the last couple weeks a couple other regions down here across various oil fields are getting hit as well uh, this three-pointer coming in just after midnight out here around the snyder oil field I'll zoom in here and show you guys where this earthquake is uh, very close to some type of uh, pad out here looks like a, another oil pumping operation or maybe fracking not for sure but uh, it is out there along with numerous others in this uh, named oil field out here and of course out in Pecos Texas there you got the uh, a lot of oil fields outside of Pecos whole area is just one giant uh, oil area pumping operations all right, uh, what else we got? A little bit south of uh, San Antonio as well. These guys have a lot of oil fields down here as well. Two pointers from yesterday out in the uh, lots of oil fields out there. New Madrid seismic zone. Uh, got one earthquake here from yesterday, a little 1.4. Really nothing major going on there today. A look at the general plate conditions out here across the planet as far as worldwide goes. Well, Still getting a, a little deeper activity here and shallow adjustment across the Tonga Trench area. New Zealand seeing, uh, looks like a little swarming there just off the North Island coast there with a couple threes. Solomon Island still lacking some earthquake activity. It's been a, been a little odd. We haven't seen anything fill in within this area of the plate boundary, and that's very odd. A lot of strain has to be increasing on this region here. So continue to keep an eye there on Solomon Islands for some larger quake activity. 4.2 right now coming into the uh, Indonesia Islands area there in the red flag. A couple other threes and fours out there today and some from yesterday. Roughly about the same here across the Japan area uh, as well. 
Let's go check out the Hawaii area, see if anything has changed out here. Still getting uh, some swarming up here across the Upper East Rift Zone and also some further quake activity down here leading off into a little a little area here northern edge of the Helena slump area a couple smaller quakes there let me see what's going on for the um, volcano hazard map here real quick we'll get to space weather towards the end of this update video in terms of the aurora activity from last night and the next couple nights here uh, there's the uh, latest information here on Kilauea Volcano let's go check it out uh, actually they have not updated the uh, map yet or at least the update this is still from yesterday but uh, we can check out the graphs here ourselves and see if there's anything of abnormal activity on them which there really isn't uh, past 12 hours here Uh, across this area show uh, you know continued earthquake activity we really haven't seen this thing die down completely it's always having earthquakes uh, still pressurizing there across the area really uh, no notable change nothing new on the uh, tilt meter station I keep clicking on the wrong one I mean I meant to click on this one there we go uh, so really no change here across that tilt meter overall inflation there across the summit area continues to go up slightly but overall we lost a lot of volume of magma there from the summit off to the upper east rift zone recently and uh, just a waiting game here so we'll continue to keep an eye on that uh, Alaska area still seeing some movement across the entire northern area here of the Pacific plate boundary but really nothing of abnormal activity today and across China, eastern Afghanistan, and a little bit in Iran from yesterday. Let's take a look here at the Earthquake 3D globe. Really not a whole lot of change out there across the Middle East area for now. And the Mediterranean region, quite a few twos, but really that is just normal on any given day. A little 4.9 down in the South Sandwich Trench area from yesterday or late last night. Um, yeah, interesting activity up there around the uh, Greenland area. Let's go check out Iceland <clears throat> in terms of uh, earthquake activity. This is getting a little ramped up here, it looks like, across the area of the Savart Singi region. Got a little separate swarm going on here west of Grindvik, uh, south of the Blue Lagoon and the uh, power plant area. Nothing big for now, but uh, getting a little bit of earthquake activity. Somewhat deep though, about five kilometers or so in this area. Uh, this whole region right here is quite inflated and it's um, getting close to another eruption here. Just gotta wait a little bit. Uh, the key to watching this, of course, is gonna be a lot of earthquake activity, uh, which there's not a lot right now, but a little increasing movement there across the uh, Svartsingi area. Here's the vertical displacement. Notice. Uh, have they updated this yet? Looks like they have. Uh, we're above the previous level seen there. Back um, in the end of May, we had that last eruption. Gone down a little bit here in terms of inflation, but now we're back up again. So we're recharged here for the next eruption there across Iceland. Just a matter of time uh, before that takes place. Let's see if we got any new updates from the Icelandic Met Office, which we do. Uh, increased probability of magma flow and even an eruption in the coming days. And this is put out here from the official folks here. Uh, it is slowly increasing and they are noticing that as well as far as the number of earthquakes around the area. Uh, model calculations now claiming that there's enough pressure built up underneath the region here to trigger a new event in the coming days. So we'll continue to uh, watch that. Grindavik area down here. Uh, in the potential hazard area as well. Uh, most likely scenario though is that uh, it's going to be up here across the craters area where we've seen the last couple eruptions but still the Grindavik area uh, the town there, little village is uh, potentially in that zone as well. Alright let's get to 
space weather, no tsunamis, uh, space weather activity. What happened last night? Where's our G3 class storm? Where did it go? See, it just goes to show you sometimes, you know, you predict something and then it really doesn't happen. Yes, there was a little bit of uptick. We, uh, I think we reached up to a G1 class storm. Let me double check that and see where we're, um, where's our real time, right? Okay, so this is the most uh, recent data. 24-hour uh, observed maximums there, G1 storm. So we only see the KP index up around the 5 or so. Uh, not the 7 like they were forecasting here. Now, that was the predicted G3 class storm. We only reached G1. Over the next couple nights, we're expecting the G2 class storm off and on, uh, according to the... Uh, Space Weather Prediction Center, and it's forecasted up here as well. So unsettled conditions there uh, in terms of aurora potential over the next couple nights. Now, not for sure why we didn't get the major increasing elevated activity like they were forecasting. Everything was uh, pretty much in tune. Let me see here. Let me check the latest real-time solar wind stream here. Uh, last night, uh, the BZ component here was pointing south south of this line, and that's always a good sign. Since then, this could be the uh, aurora inhibitor, this red line being above that uh, darker line, indicating uh, a more northward tilt with that BZ component. So that's, uh, that could be one of the reasons why we didn't see things play out like they said it was going to. Density um, is really not up there too much anymore it's starting to go down the wind speed for solar wind is starting to go down as well um but still uh they're calling for you know g2 storming conditions here uh, over the next couple nights in fact the forecast here shows you guys kp index around five tomorrow night six uh this is very iffy and it all it's all dependent on that bz component there of the interplanetary magnetic field uh, on whether it's pointing north or south. A south below that line is going to be good for auroras. North above that line is going to be bad. Suppresses the activity out here. But this is the forecast here for tonight, tomorrow. Seen uh, some roars down into Nebraska area, Kansas area as well. But uh, you really had to look and you had to use a long duration exposure, I believe, to see some of those auroras. Like if you had your phone set to, uh, uh, you know, a number of uh, seconds that uh, it allowed the light to come in it amplified the auroras a little bit on the phone photos but uh yeah so we'll see what happens over the next couple nights here this is what they're calling for off and on chances here of auroras reaching maybe up to the kp index of six or so as far as any major solar flares go looks like we're going back down here into the sea flare category number of different sunspots currently facing the earth but they're starting to drift further off here across the western limb of the sun or western quadrant of the sun here uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on these areas as they are possibly uh getting ready to produce maybe some m flare maybe an x flare or so within this region we'll continue to keep an eye uh, on these multiple sunspots out here also back around the eastern limb we've got a number of sunspots as well not a whole lot of complexity, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye here for uh, some flaring in the coming days. 25% chance for X flare, M flare 80, C flare around 99% chance or so. Uh, far as Storm Prediction Center goes in the severe weather category, got an enhanced area here across a few states. Uh, that is due to, it looks like some tornado potential there in the green wind appears to be the main damaging factor out here for severe weather so we could see some uh some high wind gusts associated with these thunderstorms whether it's inflow or outflow uh, we got a potential of seeing some damaging wind gusts out there across that area of uh, missouri iowa illinois area and uh, portions of nebraska omaha area as far as hurricanes go, well, let's check out the uh, asteroids out here. See if we got any uh, close approaches going on. Oh, this one's under a million miles. That's uh, still fairly far away. Well, here's another one well over a million miles. 
some big asteroids, but really not uh, any close approaches that I can see. A million miles is fairly safe uh, from this planet. All right, folks, I'm jumping off here. Have yourself a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Um, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things with the space weather. We just don't know 100% if it's going to be a good show or not. I'm sure a few folks got to see the auroras last night, but it's not quite as spectacular as what uh, you know we were hoping for. Current aurora levels, they're pretty quiet. Uh, only very slim chances up there at the extreme higher regions around the polar areas. But uh, that's about it. Have a good day. Enjoy your Tuesday, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here this evening.